but uh, had a question um, about uh, pain in the shoulder. So we're going to go through a sort of, uh, without uh, having the person in front of us, go through a sort of a, a framework for discovering uh, the cure or how to reduce pain. Um, so first question is who was the person and come up with two types of people. One is a boxer and the other is someone's mother. Uh, so you can see the probably uh, other end of the, the spectrum in terms of activity, perhaps. Um, so what sort of activity does your mother do, uh, Rachel? Okay, so the mother is um, 16 years old, <laughs> but has the, uh, the worldwide epidemic uh, of a tech's neck, uh, or a device uh, posture. Uh, so a lot of people are texting like this, and you can see it's caused uh, uh, excessive thoracic kyphosis, which is the rounding of the back. Um, you're turning into a praying mantis, or into a, what I call a slot. Uh, somebody who doesn't move much, uh, moves, sleeps for about more than 16 hours a day, uh, moves very slowly, um, but hasn't got good posture. Now, so clearly, that's uh, for anyone who has a cell phone, which is like probably two thirds of the world, if not more, it's going to be an issue. And it's definitely going to be an issue for the children, the teenagers that are now in 2018, you know, when in another 10 years' time, it's going to be a massive thing. So, if we can talk about that a little bit now to help uh, alleviate that. Now, the other, the other people are boxers. Now, so what do boxers do? Um, anything different from text devices? No. Probably not because they come up like this. So for an orthodox, uh, I've got this shoulder protecting sure. my chin from being knocked out. So I'm up like that, and then the other one's also up here, so I don't get hit here as well. Mm. And this creates uh, the same round of posture as if it's text neck, except for uh, if you see side on, you can see this side is rotated. Through here, so the rotation sort of adds another complication. Um, but essentially, if we're all tucked in here, whether we're a boxer or a texter, is that we can't move our arms up here because everything's jammed in. All the muscles have grown into that position that they do the most. <coughs> it's called facilitation or faulty loading. Uh, so I can't get my arms up now. Um, to the degree I can't get my arms up past 140, and that's not even 90, is the impingement of the two, of the bones in there. So we've got the clavicle bone, and we've got the AC joint, and the, the uh, you know, AC joint and the glenohumeral uh, joint, that gets all jammed in. Now, you have the supraspinatus muscle, which is like a ribbon, it comes to the top of the clavicle and then in through the AC joint, and that gets pinched up in here. Uh, so when it pinches, when you lift your arms up above, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, above horizontal, but certainly um, 140. Now, why, why? Um, now, so what happens then? There's a bursa underneath, and a bursa is this little sac that that squeezes out synovial fluid to the articular surfaces of the cartilage. Now that goes. Oh, there's an impingement here. So it's kind of dumb, it only does one thing. So it goes, oh, I need to squirt out some more fluid. And that's its answer to every time there's a pinch there, it just pushes out more fluid. And then over time, that gets inflamed because it's doing too much work, because all this posture. Uh, so that gets inflamed, and that, that, that also encroaches on the space of here. Right? So it's like this vicious cycle getting worse and worse and worse. So what we need to do is open up our thoracic spine, so that these arms come up. Okay? So you can see from there, that's as high as I can get, but if I open up my thoracic spine, I can open up the shoulder. So it's not necessarily just focusing, oh, I've got shoulder pain, let's put some ultrasound on shoulder pain, um, it's a tiger balm or something. <laughs> it's actually look at the thoracic spine, and then, then all the other surrounding muscles. 
Yeah, so, so yeah, the cobra is an active um, thoracic mobilizer or keep, her, keep it there exercise. But before we want to do that is, now, not necessarily before, but, but probably you want to sort of mobilize first with the towel or a roller. You can either put a roller here for someone who's really bad. Um, and once they once they sort of improve a little bit, you can sort of segmentalize it. You can really focus it and just lie in there. And there's, you can just lie in there, or you can do some other ex exercises um, up for three minutes to fifteen minutes. Just to open that up. Concentrate on diaphragmatic breathing. The diaphragmatic breathing will relax them. If they relax, the thoracic spine will let go, and you'll have a greater range of movement just by doing that. So that's, that's the first place I'll do for a boxer or for a mother or for a teenager who has teeth next. So I would mobilize it and then I would do the prone, this, if you can even do it standing, prone cobra exercise. Um, we've got external shoulder rotation. So the external shoulder rotation is opening up that, again, that's opening that up. You can see there and then there, it'll open, open up this space. So every time we open up this space, it's going to be less pain registering, registering in the brain. If we have pain, we're going to go back into a fetal position. So the prone, any sort of posture like that, and we can do that on the ground, you'd have to fight gravity, but it's in these muscles here, the erector spinae, and the external shoulder rotators, the teres minor and the intraspinatus. So they, they start to getting strength, and you want to hold there a long time, so it's an endurance, postural endurance exercise, and that, that should be able to keep there for longer. So if I just keep that position, just put my arms there, so my posture is pretty good. So you just sort of get them to do this more often. Um, and of course, <clears throat> you can do it. You can't do it as much as they're doing that, but at least you can start arresting it, mm. and making them more aware. More aware. All right. So that, that's from that point of view. Now, for a boxer. Um, the, the, the muscles that are doing that are the pec minor muscles, the pec major muscles, shoulder muscles, tricep muscles, but mostly it's here. So you're coming here and you're pushing and you're punching, so they get tight. Uh, now, in terms of the way I look at it for boxers, I look at, okay, in the ring you're a boxer, outside the ring you're an athlete. Uh, and the difference being that if you stand like this in the ring, you'll get knocked out. Uh, but as an athlete with good posture, you, you're going to move much better, you're going to get stronger, all your physical abilities are going to improve if you do everything to your posture, but you also need sport specific postures. So what we're doing as athletic trainers uh, is to get them into good athletic posture, and then their boxing trainer, as soon as they get in that ring or put, you know, hitting pads, they go into boxing. So we've got to try and, you know, so we're always fighting a sort of a battle. Right? And then that means you've got to convince them that it's worth doing. Um, and I know that what you've done with, with Raymond and Nabish, I think that they look pretty convinced just by looking at their toe touch, mm -hmm. how much that's improved. Um, so uh, you've got to get them on board and you've got to get the, uh, the boxing trainer on board. So what other muscles are involved? Okay, so pec minor. And that's, that's coming from, from up here to the first sort of three ribs. They're about so I remember my anatomy, um, and and that's involved in a lot of shoulder injuries. So be, that'd be like the second thing. Right, first thing would be thoracic extension for me, for me. Uh, second thing I'd be looking to open up the chest, um, some sort of stretch like that. With the the elbow can come up and down above the shoulder height, but but you want to rotate away, um, use a wall, uh, and get a stretch through here. You can do long static stretch, you can do a contract relax. Um, you could then add a, um, you know, any, any type of mobilizing device um, or tool. You know, you could, you could just sort of find that the trigger point in there and, and release it. You could, just be gentle, but just anything to release it. There's all sorts of different things. Um, sometimes I use the rubber bands and uh, put a rubber band around the wrist and then hang off it and then you get a distraction. 
to stretch them so it's pulling it, pulling it out rather than all being all compressed and you know, doing that on, in its joint. Um, okay, so that's internal shoulder rotators, the pec, minor as well. The lats are also internal or medial shoulder rotators. So, and the lats also affect this here. So the third one for me would be to stretch the lats. To, so they come up through into the bicep, come around to the scapula and then come down all the way down to the pelvis. So they're a huge muscle. Um, and so boxes, whereas they need to go fast there, but they also need to come back fast. So that's, that's your lats, it's your rhomboids, um, and your, your middle trapezius, sort of etc. Um, but they tend to do, uh, tend to get really short because they're in here. Um, so we need to stretch them any way you want to do that. The, the, the band stretch does it. Um, this is the sort of the basic stretch which I would do with that, as long as it doesn't impinge. Um, and if it impinges, maybe you have to do something, something like that. Um, but I wouldn't just stick to one. I'd certainly find the one that didn't hurt the most, or didn't hurt at all. But you want to feed some slack by stretching here. You feed some slack into this point here. Uh, then once you feed some slack into there, then you want to do an exercise to keep it there. The prone cobra will still do that, but now you probably want to get some strength. So the high row, then you can do it on a TRX, you can do it on a, on a, on a bar, um, you, could do, you could do bent over row. But for me, it's this grip because it gets your rhomboids and middle trapezius to get your scapula to come back. Plus, it's also the opposite of that. The opposite of that is pulling back as well. And in terms of the boxer, um, still applies to the, the mother and still applies to the teenager. So I wouldn't necessarily differentiate. It's just probably the loading and the reps you, you might do differently. But definitely you want to do it slow, have some sort of static strength. So you might go a static hold, so you might go two seconds to here, one, two to hold, two to go back. So it's everything slow.